here we are today, another Tuesday, another Transcendental Tuesday. And today's a special day. Uh, well, they're all special days, but today uh, to us is really special because we're going to be helping all of you connect to your loved ones in spirit by helping you to feel their love. And we're going to do that first by helping you heal some of your trauma, limiting beliefs, whatever you have going within you that is blocking you. Because that's really the only problem. The only thing that, quote, goes wrong, and even this isn't wrong, but the only, the only problem really is lack of belief Okay, lack of belief in what that you can have what you want. In this case, connect to your loved one in the spirit world, have a relationship with them. Lack of belief in that, right, for one thing. And and then what I've talked about earlier this week in the group, in a post about lack of faith, which is really the same thing, similar thing, but but faith is necessary to get you through this because if you don't believe, you might as well pack it up and stay right where you are. That, that's it. If you have great faith, you can achieve anything. But without that faith, without that belief, you're basically arguing for your limitations. You're basically looking at the world around you and agreeing with the conscious mind, third dimensional consensus that this is all there is. So you really only have those two choices. Either go all in and believe that there is an afterlife, even if you're not sure. Believe that there is. And if you believe that, you'll start to vibrate at that level, at that energy. Okay, with that frequency, because it's all frequency-based, this reality. So that frequency of the afterlife, the frequency of where our loved ones are, this higher frequency that is not this dense 3D frequency. So you've got to rise above to that level. And you've got to let go of your fears, your limiting beliefs, right? And you have to at least be open to explore the possibility that, that your loved one is there in the spirit world. If you're not sure how you're going to connect, even if you're not sure completely if it's real, you have to at least be open to exploring it. You have to at least believe that it's possible and lean into that. And the more you do that, the more you'll start creating that experience. Because really, I, I hate to break it to you, but this whole reality is all made up anyway. We're all making up the illusion of this reality. So you might as well create the illusion of the reality that you want with your loved one in the spirit world. and dive into that because you're already creating the illusion of lack and you know how that feels meaning the lack of them being here you know how that feels that doesn't feel so good so in this group and in all the work that alan and i do we talk about this a lot and we help people to shift their beliefs and open their minds and 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 really just expand your consciousness and live as your soul so before we get going here, though, I want to mention something because because we're coming toward, I don't know, I'm not saying it's the end, but we're coming at least toward a long pause in one-on-one -on -one work for a while because we're going to dive into our program that we'll, we will be introducing to you. I'm hoping by the end of November, very, very beginning of December at the latest, and we're going to go all in in that and really teach teach you folks, Alan's saying rather intensely, to be honest with you, for, for two or three months, teaching you how to how to connect in a deeper way and how to, how to go through your own healing in a more profound way. We're going to start on that today, but we're going to go fully more into it in the program for the launch. So, so one thing that, that when, I want to, when I'm talking about that I want to say about that is because we're pulling back a bit from one on ones. I some of you are sitting on the fence about having a loving heart connection session with us. So this is really your last chance, and I mean for everybody. There's some 
some of you might think, well, I guess I, I can I can contact her in January. Like she'll fit me in. I probably won't be able to. So so from now until latter part of November, still open for that. And I still have some sessions available. If you have questions about it, reach out to me. But Loving Heart Connections basically is, um, here you go, a method of direct after the communication that Alan urged me to learn. I didn't even know it existed. I think I heard somebody talk about it in some group somewhere. And then he directed me to it online. And I watched an interview with the founder of Loving Heart Connections. And he said, you need to learn this because this is gonna help us connect more deeply and this is gonna help the people we work with. So as of today, I've worked with 49 clients. I've taught 49 clients Loving Heart Connections. And so they can make direct contact with their loved ones on the other side. Does that mean they're fully connected? Like. I don't even know how you might define that, right? Like they're, oh, I'm saying walking hand in hand with them around. Uh, some of them might be, but let's just say they made huge strides in connecting. And the more they practice this, just like I practice it, the stronger the connection becomes. And this is importantly, the more intuitive they become, their psychic development opens up. So many amazing things happen. You receive healing in these sessions. I've received healing in the sessions that I've done for myself. And it's just a cutting edge method of after death communication and that can lead to more direct contact. Okay, not just communication, contact. And lately I've been trying to remind my clients not to just look for phenomenon in the session. Although there can be and there is, but outside the session, in your 3D life, in the world around you, that happens for people too. And that they need to stay the course with this. This is not something I teach somebody once and now they got it and it's all hunky dory. No, we got to practice it. Got to practice it. But there's huge benefit in doing it. And you only need one session to get going. You don't need to keep going to mediums. I don't know why people cannot seem to, Alan says, uh, kick their addiction to mediumship readings rather than going direct. The other side wants us to go direct. You're going to hear us talk about this more and more, and especially in my program. The other side is screaming at us to come directly to them, to talk directly to them to maybe go to a medium in the beginning when you need that, you're still not sure if this is all real, fine. But they don't want us to go to mediums. They want to go direct because you could go to a medium for the rest of your life and you'll not be further ahead. You'll be trusting somebody else to talk to your loved one rather than you because you're not exercising the muscle. And I understand it's easier to turn to somebody else to talk to your loved one and to believe that they're getting the information more accurately than you because maybe they studied it. But they can talk to us directly and they want to because of the bonds of love between us, okay? The modality Living Heart Connections was created by the spirit world for that reason. Jane Bissler didn't even want to practice it because she she was that age where she's going to retire but the spirit world was knocking on our door saying we want you to do this because nobody else was doing it and this is how the spirit world does reach out to the physical world and always has so, so in time either i won't be available for this or if i am price is probably going to be way more expensive because my time's going to be way more limited. So it's going to be way more expensive. I, I'm just saying that I'm just being honest with you. Okay. So, cause my time is better spent working with groups. So if I'm working one-on-one -on -one in the future next year, it's going to cost a lot just because my time's going to be really valuable. So 
right now you can still have get a session which is all two two hours to two and a half hours for two hundred and forty seven dollars and really it's Alan said this should be close to five hundred dollars for what what we offer we offer because he works on the other side with your loved one and we always and we are always available for fault questions with our clients always we will always be no matter how busy I am so this is really your last chance and i'm not this is not a marketing ploy i'm not trying to say you know um you know come get this session with me i just don't want people to be disappointed i don't want you guys to reach out to me and say i'm so bummed that i didn't schedule this because this is probably going away and when it comes back it might be 500 dollars. i you know just because again my time will be so valuable and it takes two to two and a half hours of my time that's just reality You'll be able to have sessions with other wonderful facilitators who I'll be happy to direct you to. But as for coming to us, and I think I'm the only facilitator who works with someone on the other side. <laughs> Not that he comes in the session, but what I mean is he's helping your loved one on the other side. So our sessions are a little different. So anyway, just that that kind of I want to mention that because because that that is going to go away and that this is our booking link go.oncehub.com forward slash pam allen you can book on that link if you can't somehow doesn't work just message me in the group email me if you like you can email me to reach out to me and say hey i can't book can i can you give me you know some help whatever uh Alan says health is wave the red flag <laughs> we'll come running but this is going to go away soon and i don't want anybody to get upset with us to say i didn't know i will be emailing my list my group you know list right now um and shortly because i haven't even told them so so that might sell out so i'm just letting you know i i don't understand why more people don't dive into loving heart connections it is the only thing out there to my knowledge that does this one session and you learn how to practice it yourself and you you can run with it it does take time to practice on your own but it's way easier than meditation in our program we're going to we're going to kind of explore other ways to to connect including trance states including life between lives and probably i'm gonna i'm going to see about teaching like a, a, it's a form of regression so doing group work group regression so there's a lot of things we're going to explore in the program which again i'm going to talk about later when we get to launch it next month but we're also, also going to explore lucid dreaming in the program in the paid program because i know that when we learn something as a group it's more powerful we learn anything as a group is more powerful because the collective group energy takes everybody further. And and Alan's laughing. He says, and it's more powerful when your loved one on the other side who's co-teaching with you is, you know, is is able to help on their end. So so we're excited about that. And and just wanted to tell you that all everything that we do here, like what we're doing today. We're going to guide, dive deeper into it in the program. Here, I can only take you so far. And we cannot really curate the content and have it really available to you when you need to go back to and you want to revisit. Okay, It doesn't, it doesn't allow us to do that, Facebook. It just gets lost in the black hole that Facebook is. So that's just the reality. And... And frankly, you know, it was never, Facebook wasn't designed for that. So we are creating a, um, a platform where we will house all the content and there'll be, there'll be Zooms, there'll be a lot of interaction with us. There'll be what I call hot seats where, where we're going to interact with people, give them one-on-one -on -one kind of work or help or even kind of a reading. But you can only do that in the paid group program at the, I want to say the the premium level program, but there'll be two levels. We'll go on more into that next month. There'll be a level that's really affordable that won't have as much interaction with us, but you still get a lot of amazing content. So 
for today now, and I don't know why I'm not seeing you guys' comments in my StreamYard <laughs> feed. So if I if I seem to be ignoring you, I'm not. I just don't see it. I don't see it in my in my feed here on my pan on my dashboard. Okay, that's just that's just how it is for some reason. I don't know. So we're just gonna go with that. Alan says, let's just let's just move on. So we're gonna move on. Again, I don't know why. Sorry about that, guys. So strange. Why is this not there? Oh, hold on. Maybe I see you. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm looking at my phone. See my phone? Can you guys see my phone? Okay, so I'm looking at my phone. So I see your comments, but it's hard. I can't track it here, but I'm seeing you guys. I see you guys comment, but I can't look at this and look at you. As I talk. So we're just going to go all in. And I'll comment later, reply to your comments later. But in the meantime, you know, go ahead and post and I'll get back to you later. So when it comes to feeling your loved ones, love. Okay, uh, there's two levels of feeling, obviously. We're talking about emotional, in this case, feeling their love. We're also talking about feeling them persentiently, meaning feeling their energy. Because they're energy beings and they can make us feel in a certain way, not like 3D feel, but feel their energy, like pulses of energy, tingling, whatever you want to call it, right? Even even a sense of presence. And Alan is showing me that they can kind of manifest to to give pressure on the body, things like that, or feel or the sensation of being touched, although they don't have a body to touch us with. So if you want any of that, it's important that you clear up your own trauma. Okay. And now that doesn't mean if you've had trauma or you're highly empathic, which to us means that actually you have a lot of trauma. If you're highly empathic, meaning that you take on other people's emotions really easily, you get kind of destabilized when people around you are not happy or they're in a bad mood. That means you've got trauma that is actually being triggered. That's why that person's bad mood or their anger, whatever the negative emotion is, is being felt by you. Because if you didn't have that, you wouldn't feel it. You, you would know, you could know that they're not happy or angry or sad, but, or maybe feel a little bit of it, but you wouldn't go into matching their energy. Everything, remember, everything's frequency based. So if somebody's frequency is angry, and you all of a sudden feel angry, that means you've got anger in you, buried in you. Maybe you're not fully aware of it all the time, but because they walked into your space and you feel them, you are now triggered. Okay, so it's not their fault. It's never anybody's fault. You have now a frequency or vibrational match to their trauma, to their anger, to their sadness, to their depression, what have you. So I want you to think on that because if you're highly empathic, you have a lot of trauma work to do. And most people do have some amount of trauma work to do. Most of most people have been traumatized. That's just how life is. And you can clear it. And we're going to do a lot of that in our program because as I see it and the spirit world has told me, that's one of the main barriers. Remember what I said earlier? The main barriers are that you don't believe that you don't have faith. Why do you not believe? Why do you not have faith? Because you were let down, because you were hurt, because people told you fearful things, or you were just raised a certain way with a certain mindset to be skeptical and, and to not have faith in yourself and others. So all that's got to be cleaned up. You don't get to just open up psychically and see your loved one and think it's all going to be amazing. It could be amazing initially, but if you're going to have Okay, Alan's saying, okay, I promised him I'd let him talk more. He says, if you're going to have the full-on relationship that you really desire, I mean, full-on, heart-filled, connecting, really feeling them on all levels, you're going to have to clean up your energy. You're going to have to deal with your problems, your issues, okay, your fears, just are. Otherwise, the connection you'll have could on some level for maybe ordinary people might seem amazing, but you'll know that something's missing. 
you'll know that something's not quite full. Not, not that it's wrong. It's just like, you know, something is, you're missing something. Okay. It's, it's just how it is. So if you want the full experience, and most importantly, if you want to live your life in a full, fulfilled, happier way, which is what they want for you, they want for all of us, then you've got to do some work, some inner work, some belief work. Alan says, okay, we want to explain why we're qualified to do this. This is all I've been learning for 30 years. Really. Not so much Alan. <laughs> he was kind of asleep at the wheel. But me, on the other hand, I was, I've always been interested in healing, always been interested in belief work, and been trained in certain modalities that do clear limiting beliefs and, and change people's thought patterns and all that. I've always done that. And I had my own awakening. I don't want to go all into that many years ago, 35 years ago. So I basically had most of my, um, let's say, limiting beliefs just wiped clear. Not everybody has a near death experience is that some do not all some people have a near death and they're still screwed up people. <laughs> I've met them. It depends where they're at when they had the near death. But if you have a near death, you, you, you move to the next level. You just move to the next level or level above that. Okay. So, so that's what happened to me and I kind of got blank slated in terms of ego because I didn't have that much to begin with. That's just how it was. And other people have a lot of ego, so they have a lot to still work on. I didn't have as much as Alan says as the average person. I just didn't. I, I've worked. I know I've worked on myself in many, many lifetimes. So, so he says I was more, always more evolved than he was. He always told me that, and he was here too. You're further ahead than me. So anyway, back to you. We're gonna work right now is shortly we're going to work on clearing some of your trauma now how do we do that we're calling going to call in your spirit team going to call on in your loved one too because your loved one on the other side they are a master healer just like we all are even when you're in a body you're a master healer you just forgot and what is healing anyway healing is love that's all it is. All it is, it's everything. It's love. Love that has no agenda. Love that's unconditional. We're not talking about romantic love necessarily. Romantic love can be possessive. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about love, which is basically God source energy. So when you are focused on someone or something, Coming from a place of love, no ego, truly no ego, because some healers are actually coming from ego, and that's why they're only semi-successful. You have to be in a place truly of being of service, neutrality, compassion, and a high degree of love. Then if it's appropriate, you can create a miracle. Can it always happen? No. Other things are involved. We won't go into it today. We're going to go more into it when we teach in our program. I have a lot to say on that. But for today, we're just saying we're calling in your team to support you. Alan's working with your team, at least for the healing today. The other side can heal us and create miracles, but they need a human in a body to step down the frequency so that you can receive it. That's why the angels don't walk around on the planet just zapping people, you know, healing them. They could come to the person if the person want to work with, wants to work with them, they could do it that way. But if somebody's really out of it or not well, they may not have the energy to do that, right? So, so it helps if there's a healer or somebody whose energy is strong enough to be the conduit. So I've always been a channel and more of a, of a, I'd say a healing channel, meaning that a conduit for the healing energies or illnesses for love actually. So we're gonna do that. There's nothing that you have to do to receive this healing, except be open. He says, you don't even have to believe. 
you just have to be open to the experience. If you're open to the experience, if you're not sitting there going, I don't want this, like, no, 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 no. You're open, right? You're, if you're open, I'll see how what happens. That's all you need to do. You don't need to believe it. He, he's reminding me that sometimes we've done healings on people that that were actually resistant and they still got healed. <laughs> Belief doesn't always have to do anything with it. Because who we're healing is really the soul. Really. And the soul can be, let's say, damaged sometimes from being in a body living this life. So we're working on the soul level, it's what he's saying. So I just want you to close your eyes right now. You're not gonna do anything fancy here. Although I am going to invoke your guides, your team, your loved ones. So take a deep breath in and let that breath out. And as you continue to breathe normally, naturally, just give yourself permission to relax. We're asking your spirit team, guides and angels, and our loved ones who wish to support us and help us to draw near. And you might feel them enter your energy field, or you might not. Doesn't matter. Just know that they're there. And great spirit, God, all it is. We ask that you help us today to release and let go of anything that no longer serves us has been holding us back from living as our soul. We give permission for you to work on us. And we trust the experience be graceful and easy. We know that we are safe, that we are loved, and that only what is for our highest good will transpire. Take a breath in, and on the exhale, release, release, release. It might feel like you're shedding a layer of energy. You might feel emotional. You might feel sad. You might feel simply sensitive to everything around you. You might feel empty. Whatever you experience, just go into that. Another breath in, and the exhale, release, 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 release any trauma you're ready to let go of. Watch it dissolve. Watch the memory fade. 
You can feel the emotion come up around that trauma. Just feel into it. Let yourself process it. And let the emotion move through you without resistance. The angels are bathing you in love and light to heal any parts of your being, your mind, body, or spirit that needs support, that needs healing and rejuvenation. So just be open to receive. Focus on your heart and open your heart wide to receive the love that is there all around you. The love that your own soul has for you. The love that your spirit team has for you. The love that your loved one has for you. All of them are sending healing to you, transmuting the pain, the suffering, the negativity. Cleansing your energy field of whatever trauma you're ready and able to release in this moment. A deep breath in. And release. 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 From this moment on, if you're in agreement, Give yourself permission to feel all of your feelings, whatever they might be in the moment. Let go of any fear you have about being emotional. I'm gonna ask the creator, the great spirit and your, and your team to teach you what it feels like to be a balanced emotional being, capable of feeling all of their feelings without embarrassment, without fear, without shame, without insecurity, What does it feel like to be fully alive and in your feelings? We're on the other side. We are high level empaths. You feel all of their emotions intensely frequently, and they relish in being able to feel everything. So that's what makes us alive. You come back to life so that you can feel your loved one. For they are fully alive. And we must also be alive. Take a deep breath in. Again, release, 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 whatever 
you're able to release today, knowing that tomorrow you can release more. Now, while you're in this state of relaxation, you might be feeling vulnerable. And that's fine, that's perfect. Because I want to bring in your loved one closer. Whether that's your partner, your spouse, some of you it could be a family member, another family member, or even a friend. And call in your loved one closer to you. And you're going to ask that they transmit their love to us. Ask the loved one to send their love to you. And imagine yourself blending with their energy, with their love. Let them into your space, let them into your body, let them into your being. There's no separation, not with the one you love most, for you are one soul. We're all one soul in truth. But your beloved is the one you've shared lifetime upon lifetime with. So feel their love and your love blending. Feel their love wash over you. We're asking them to amplify this to whatever degree is comfortable for you. As you take a breath in, imagine you're breathing in their love. On the exhale, you're releasing any doubt you have about this experience, any doubt you have about their love. On the exhale, breathe in love. Sorry, I mean, and on the inhale, breathe in love. On the exhale, breathe out doubt. Although Alan's saying, let's breathe in love and exhale love too. <laughs> because all there is is really love. Feel their love alive and pulsing around you. I feel their love grow stronger. The more you relax and trust. Take a breath in and go deeper. And know that you will feel your loved one's love more strongly in each passing day. The more you trust and believe. the more relaxed you are.
where you can just go with the flow of living with them. But for now, at this moment in time, you should begin to bring yourself back into your body. Maybe you rub your hands together, palms your hands together just to get you back in. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Just let me know how that went for you. I mean, I know I can't see your comments here. I can I can see them on my phone. <laughs> so if you want to say something, I'll look on my phone. But this is something that is good to repeat. This is why we're creating the program too, because we're going to create a lot of, let's say, I don't want to call it, it's not really a training, but we're tuning you to the certain frequency. And, and so we're having, when it's recorded, we have that recorded, then you can go back and rewatch it and experience it again, because there is no limit. When we're working with beings that are beyond this reality, right? That are interdimensional. Time, the laws of time and space don't really apply. You know, if I'm just talking to you by myself without spirit working through me or with Alan working with me or whoever, it's different. But when he's showing me the door is open to the other side and the work that we do, time and space don't exist. And so if you come back and watch these things, you not only go back to well, okay, he's laughing at me. He's saying, you can't really go back to when we did it like a second ago. You're watching it as if it's happening all over again now because we only have now. Past, present, future don't exist. You only have now. So when you watch the video, like this one, again, you're watching it now, like it's happening now. So you're kind of going back, but you're going back to the now, <laughs> back, not back to the future, back to the present. <laughs> like that movie, Back to the Future, right? So, so it's all happening now. And you're basically re-experiencing it now when you watch this later. And the spirit world, because they don't care, they'll know that you're watching it. Like if you watch it tomorrow, they'll show up. Your team will show up. We show up. The multidimensional part of me shows up. So you have this again. This is why we're creating this, all this content that can be rewatched and rewatched, and people will still heal and grow, clear their trauma. Okay, and and it's all up to you how often you want to rewatch it and have the experience again. He's now he's showing me that it's kind of like giving you training wheels like you just practice it and you get stronger and then you're off on your own and you don't need the training wheels anymore and you can just fly. You can just do this. You can feel their love. You can do CD, all kinds of things. You know, you don't, you don't need us to help you. You don't need them to help you, although they always will. So we're giving, we'll give thanks to the other side, to the spirit world. They don't need our thanks, but it's always, Nice to do that, to give our thanks and gratitude. Deb says that she felt surrounded by her team. I love that, Deb. And let's see. And Maria says, my heart was beating quite intensely. It was, it was, okay, hold on. It was like my whole self was enveloped by this heartbeat. It was pretty cool. Yay, yay. Love it. Um, and. Sherry got a song from her husband, Love, Rain, or Me. I don't know what that song is, but that sounds cool. Love it, Sherry. Elizabeth felt her team around her, teared up, and got some images of her and Becky. Which should definitely keep watching this. Great. I'm glad. And, and it's all in the group, but again, you know, it's hard to, hard to navigate it in the group. It just is. So that's why we're creating something outside the group. Hold on, let me just see. 
if Alan wants to say something. He, he, want, he wants to say, to restate what I said earlier about the real only challenge you have is space. Only challenge, in fact, next week we're gonna we're gonna probably do he's showing me a two-part series starting next week. We're gonna talk about um, the nature of the real reality. Because your concept of reality is he says it's kind of screwy. <laughs> it's not you look outside at this world and you think that's the reality. It's not the reality. Looking, we're gonna talk about that. You need to understand the true nature of reality. If you're gonna have an interdimensional relationship or you're gonna struggle, because you're gonna keep looking at everybody else around you and say, well, wait a minute, you know, this is different. Well, yeah, it's different. It's actually better. <laughs> but you don't quite understand that. So you compare to what's out here. By the way, what you see right now, like in this world right now, this is the past. This is the past. It's the old energy of the old belief system that is showing up here. So if you want the future, the new future with your loved one, you gotta stop looking out here because it's not here yet. It will be eventually, but right now, this is the old pattern, right? The old frequency that, that you're shifting away from. So you can't see it out here right away. This is gonna be an inner journey. And, and it is all about frequency. So you have to get used to feeling into that frequency of faith and hope and the higher the higher energies of joy. And the reason it's hard, I know, when you're grieving is the energy of grief is so dense and it's really low and it's hard for you to reach up. So it's okay. You gotta process your emotions. You gotta cry. Let yourself cry. Don't think that you're going backwards if you cry. Think of it that you're processing, you're releasing. Okay, you're not helping, held back. You need to release, you need to process your pain, your sorrow, your suffering, your resentment about the past. So there are things that didn't go right and should have been better. Like you should have been better. He should have been better. She should have been, whatever. I had a lot of resentment about toward Alan, but I had to let that go in order to step into this new higher frequency where he's at, and you must do the same. But it takes time, it takes time, but you can get there, but it does take time. Okay, so, because remember, where they exist is a higher plane of existence. It's not off limits to you, it doesn't mean you can't reach that, it just means you've got to clean up your vibration, and you gotta start by understanding what is the real nature of reality. Because it's not what they teach in school. You're learning how to live in two worlds. Really, it really it's three worlds. If you want to be really, um, you know, specific, get really got down to it, it's of course the other side. There's a world of the afterlife. The other side, that's one world, and then there's this physical world, which is the world of illusion, and then there's your inner world. What is going on within you? Your subconscious beliefs. What are your fears? What are your what are you what are you feeling? What what is what is the dominant emotion that you're feeling? Okay, what is that? So there's three worlds really. But you can can you understand when you're trying to reach through to the other side and have this relationship, you're not gonna feel always grounded. <laughs> to put it mildly. You'll sometimes feel like, like, what day is this? Like, this is a sign that you've made progress. Not that you're losing your mind, not that you have dementia, okay? It's a sign that you are straddling the two worlds. And then there's that third inner world that you're taking along with you. So this is to be expected. Your brain is also changing as you're mind is expanding, your brain has to kind of adapt to it. So your brain, literally, he's showing me it kind of gets stretched. So some people feel like 
they've got a little brain fog going on or something, or maybe mild headache or something. This could be an adjustment that you're going through. These are real changes that you're put, putting yourself through, that you're allowing yourself to have because you're wanting to have this relationship through the veil. Oh, and he's showing me that. And your partner is actually doing what they can from their end to help you with that. Because remember what I said earlier, they're master healers. We're all master healers. They're doing what they can energetically to support us from their end. And then you have your team that are helping you too. So you get, we're getting all this help. And it, so sometimes it's gonna, you're just going to feel strange. But please, please never think to yourself that you're making it up or that you're crazy. That's the outer world, their view, and you know how screwy that world is. Which world do you think is really sane? I mean, by now you guys should have figured out the outside world is the crazy world. The inner world is where the sanity is. The inner world is where the truth is. Not out there. Right? The world around us is going to get crazier. Hate to break it to you. Because we're going through the ascension, we're moving into the fifth dimension. Systems have to break down in order to be rebuilt. Things have some things have to be destroyed, have to fall apart. There will be more storms. There will be more earthquakes and those kind of things. That's just that's just part of it. There'll be inner earthquakes, if you will. You can be on the other side of that to a great extent by working on yourself, by understanding how manifestation really works, which we're also going to teach in our program. Manifestation really isn't that complicated. You have to understand the deep, the real intricacy of it. It's not even complicated. It's just that some people have screwy ideas about it. How it goes. It's really simple. And we're going to help you understand that. And then manifesting the relationship with your loved one, that's definitely something that you can do. And we're certainly going to focus on that. Oops, I don't know. Something's coming with my phone. I'm not able to see your chat. Let's see here. Okay, and I like what, Heather, I like what you just said about you, Danny, creating this pattern of playing music, communicating, communicating through music. So that would, that's going to be what I'm going to close with. And I actually didn't want to talk about that. If you really want to feel them energetically, feel their love, the other side loves to communicate through music, songs, music, anything musical. Okay. If you don't have a playlist, what are you doing? Go make one. Create a playlist of your favorite songs or their favorite, your, your mutual favorite songs or, or go listen to our playlist. I'll have to post a link in the group for it because we have, I don't know, 200 something songs, maybe more in there. These were songs that Alan gave to me directly or through other people. And play the music that they love or that we love together, right? That you mutually love. That's just how it's so easy for them to transmit their love to give us goosebumps, to just come in on that the frequency of that music. Because music, most of it is inspired, meaning of spirit. Oh, sure, there's some music, you know, that you might listen to and go, oh my God, what kind of music is this? This is horrible. But music by and large is from spirit. So that means they can come in on that music, whatever the song is, whether it's Beatles, whether it's, Andrea Bocelli, whether it's, whether it's Rolling Stones, it doesn't matter. Whatever music you love that they love or that comes in that they can put into your mind because Alan did that for me, still does that to me. I'll wake up and there's a song playing in my head. I'll go, oh, you want that song today? Okay. That's how they can connect. So do yourself a favor and do this already. If you're not doing this already, Make a playlist. Play that playlist all the time. I was playing the playlist that he gave me since he left. And I and he still, I hear him say, hey, I'm putting on the music. I go, oh, okay, I forgot today. Because he wants to come in on the music. You want to feel their love? Let music lead the way. 
And then you won't always need the music to feel their love. But it amplifies their love. They, they love that. So, so look into that. If you haven't done that already, in the group, share the songs that they gave you. I love it when you guys do that. Post a song. Oh, he gave me this song today. Or this is, this is a song that, that I always feel goosebumps from him when I play it. Share that song. They love it. Oh, he, yeah, Lance Lavi goes, yeah, they love it when we shared the songs they gave us. Again, I post in the group. They, they like to brag about that. Oh, look, my loved one just talked about me today. Oh, look, she posted the song I gave her. Do you know they really do like that? Love that? Because so few souls on the other side have a partner in a body who's actively engaged with them. So no, I'm not saying they're walking around all cocky going like, oh, look how she's playing. They just love it because this is what it's all about. And because the spirit world wants to come through. And because when we do that for each other, we make it more real for each other. We're helping each other and we're helping them. So Alan's laughing. He goes, your, your assignment is to come through with a song once in a while and post it somewhere. It doesn't have to be in our group. Go in somebody else's group. We don't care. But share your story. Share your songs. Share your message. And please, we're going to start scolding people who go, well, he's talking, he's talking to me, gives me messages, but, but, I don't know if I'm talking to myself. Stop it. We're going to start scolding you, going, delete that, the butt. I wonder if I'm making it up. Go all in and just trust it. Just believe it. You create this reality anyway. You're creating this relationship anyway. Does it mean it's not real? What does it mean? You're co creating it with your loved one. If you hold a vision of them, let's say you imagine them sitting with you right now next to you. You just envision that deliberately, okay? This is not a vision popping into your head. I mean, you're, you're envisioning it on purpose. You're basically inviting them in to what you just imagined, saying, I'm seeing you right here next to me. You're calling them to join you. That's one way that you did that, okay? Doesn't mean, and they can come in, they can be right there. If you're sitting there and you, all of a sudden you get an impression like, oh, he seems to be sitting right next to me. You weren't trying to make that happen, it just popped into your mind. You didn't create that. You just felt their presence and because they're there, it came into your mind. Two different things. Both of them can lead to contact, okay, but different. Again, when you envision them or you just call out to them, they come in and they might look a certain way. You could have envisioned that, but they're saying, who cares? If, if I envision Alan, he's showing me a vision, of, he's so silly, showing me a vision of him sitting on my lap. <laughs> He'll say, okay, I'll come sit on your lap because I envisioned it, he'll cooperate. But more often than not, he'll just pop into my head and I'll see something, like he's doing something, or he's standing behind me, or he's kissing me on the forehead or, or something. Trust what you see, feel, or imagine. And then it'll get stronger, and then you'll be able to be more confident because you'll, you'll prove it prove it to yourself, or they'll help you prove it to yourself. But you've got to start with being all in. You got to start all in, or you might as well forget it. And they don't want you to forget it. But that's up to you. Okay, so we're at an hour. We're, we're going to stop now. I knew today was going to go an hour. So watch this often if you need to join us next week. We're going to, we're going to talk about the true nature of reality and understand that it's all about faith. So just choose to have faith. Just choose to believe. Believe in the real world. The real world where they are. All right. Love you. See you guys next week. And we'll see you in the group. Take care.